I'm in the mood to talk about something like mental health related, but uh, apparently there are more pressing concerns. So I guess I'm just gonna sit here until uh, he decides thank you. <laughs> Hi, I'm Ashton. Um, you may be hearing some loud background yelling and laughing. That's because there's a house party going on and there's like 10 drunk adults downstairs. Please excuse them. I don't know how to stop it. I am suffering just as much as you are. My dog has been in videos before. My cat's been in a couple, but I don't think you guys know how much this cat is obsessed with me. Um, literally, if the dog is not in my room, the cat will find a way in. And sometimes even when the dog is in my room, this cat is terrified of my dog. And I love this cat so much, I'm about to cry. Anyways, let's talk about what I actually am here to talk about. I think this angle works. I can't really set up my camera how I normally can because of my movement restrictions post top surgery. <laughs> um, but speaking of top surgery, segue. I wanted to talk, if you see my arms moving, I'm just petting my cat. Today I wanted to talk about um, how being trans has impacted my mental health, specifically how transitioning and testosterone has impacted my mental health. Because I feel like it's something that isn't, you know, talked about. I don't see a lot of content creators in general talking about the intersection between being trans and being mentally ill. You're just a little prince curled up in my lap, aren't you? So some people believe that being transgender itself is a mental illness. I don't think this way, um, and I'm not here to argue about that right now. <laughs> I'm possibly going to do a video on that, but it's a big topic and it does start a lot of discourse and it's it's not something I'm... I mean, I am educated on it, I just feel like I would need to do more a uh, bit more research before I speak on it. Um, however, there's an incredible video by Riley J. Dennis about that topic and I'm going to link it here. I know I linked it in a video before, linked it is literally my last video probably. I'm sorry, it's just a good video on that topic. I, I, I'm done talking about it now. But for this video, let's just go off the assumption that me being trans in itself is not a mental illness. Honestly, I love this as like a representation. Like there's like 10 adults downstairs that are drinking and like talking and laughing and I'm just up here filming a video talking about being trans and holding a cat. While me being trans, I don't consider a mental health problem. It does impact my mental health problems sometimes, um, and just for reference, I am diagnosed with a generalized anxiety disorder, major depressive disorder, and obsessive compulsive disorder. Um, I'm not diagnosed with it, but my therapist does speculate that I may have autism, and I do kind of want to talk about that in a video, but it would be a long video that I would have to plan out. I'm holding him in such a weird way and he's still just purring. <laughs> I'm gonna cry. There is a statistic that a lot more trans people experience mental health problems than cisgender people do. Um, and while some people use that as an argument that like, oh, the trans are, are sick, um, that's genuinely, like it's been proven by studies that, that is more a effect of the way that society treats trans people than it is a direct relation to being trans in itself. A lot of trans people have depression because they grow up in a society that discourages them from being who they are. They grow up in a society where they may face abuse, but just because of who they are, and that can cause depression. It's not the fact that I'm trans. Does that make sense? Like, I'm not depressed because I'm trans, okay? That's what I'm trying to get out of this right now. But anyways, I don't, I don't really want to talk about the connection between my transliness and my mental health more... I want to talk more about the connection to my transition itself and my mental health. I'm going to start a bit with testosterone. So I started testosterone almost 10 months ago now. And throughout that time, a lot of things have changed outside of, you know, the things that testosterone directly changes, like my voice and facial hair and body shape and whatever. I think that a lot of people look over, even trans people that are on hormones, is how much being on hormones can affect your mental state. Being on testosterone hasn't made me any less emotional and I know that is different for some trans guys but I feel like 10 months in it would have at least started to take its toll on my mental state but I am just as emotional as I was before if not more emotional. I not necessarily take pride but I almost embrace being a very sensitive emotional person because that's just who I am and that's who I always have been. So the hormones, you know, hormones don't affect your personality. They may affect your brain chemistry, yes, they may affect how you see situations, 
but I don't think they're going to change the fact that part of my personality is compassion and being overly emotional about things. Although I am still an emotional person, testosterone has made it easier for me to feel like I can block this off and deal with it later. Um, and I know that is a thing that testosterone can do. But again, I would like to emphasize that testosterone doesn't change who you are. It doesn't, it hasn't affected who I am as a core person. I may be wrong, but that's just my interpretation and how it's affected me. My anxiety has gotten a little bit better with testosterone in my system, but I feel like that's caused more by testosterone's effects than the testosterone chemical changes itself. They are being so loud, I'm so sorry. Like, I'm genuinely considering re-recording this video. My jeans are covered in cat fur, and my cats are supposed to be, um, non-shedding. But, uh, Bear, what do you have to say about that? You know your name, yeah, you do, you're a smart cat. Look at this boy, he comes when he hears his name. A lot of my anxiety, even though I do have generalized anxiety disorder, is social anxiety. Um, and I still have a lot of trouble ordering at restaurants. I rarely order at restaurants, but I'm also beginning to think that that is more impacted by my um like my insecurity about my body and my insecurity about how others see me then you know my voice dysphoria um it is getting a little bit better though because i feel like it's impacted by both of those things so i do have to work on my body image now the aspect of my voice dysphoria has gone down even though i still feel like i have a fairly androgynous voice i don't feel like it's a tell anymore i don't feel like if i'm out and someone sees me as a guy I don't think that speaking would change that interpretation. Um, so it's helped with my anxiety in the sense of introducing myself to people because I feel more confident in the fact that if they see me as a boy and I talk, that talking is not going to change their mind. Um, so that's helped with some like underlying causes of anxiety. It's just made me more myself than anything else. Um, like hormones will not change your personality. They've made me happier, for sure, in general, as my dysphoria has decreased, but they haven't, you know, I don't, <sighs> I'm so bad at words. I also feel that as I've transitioned and become more comfortable in myself, certain aspects of my mental health have improved. And it's not necessarily, like, put into one word, like, I can't say it, it's helped my depression, because my depression is a separate issue, but I feel like I can say that overall transitioning has majorly improved my mental health. And I know that other people have seen that reflected in me. Like my parents, when they're asked about my transition, they're like, oh, he's so much happier. Um, I also wanted to touch on something that I haven't really talked about here before, and that's my suicide attempts. Um, before being trans, I meant before my transition, I don't know why I said before being trans, that was terrible wording and completely my fault, I'm very sorry. Anyways, yeah, continue on. <laughs> I highly considered suicide to the point of not attempting it, but like writing multiple letters, and um, I was sent to the hospital for that, and then at one point in 8th grade I did attempt, and I spent, I don't know how long in the hospital, a couple days maybe? I'm not sure, but it's been a while since then. After coming out and beginning my physical and social transition, I haven't had that desire anymore. I'm more passively suicidal now due to my depression, but being passively suicidal is something I want to make a video on too, because it's a very, really odd feeling that I've never seen anyone talk about, but I know it's something that other people do experience. Um, but even though I am so passively suicidal sometimes, ever since I've started to be more accepted as the boy that I am, I've felt so much less inclined to overdose or harm myself. And my tendency to self-harm has decreased as I've transitioned, but it's also really hard to relate the two things because even though I do feel like transition has helped, there are, of course, millions of other aspects that are in my life and are changing as I grow, particularly relationships. I was in an extremely toxic relationship through 8th grade and ninth grade, and I'm in a really healthy one now. 
there's something that's weird to me because I know there's a connection and I just wish it was easier to piece together because I know it's there like I'm 100% sure it's there but there are just so many different aspects of life that I can't I can't piece it all together in a comprehensive way that I that I know I'm being 100% accurate you know so I don't want to say anything in this video is like 100% confirmed depression cured my testosterone <laughs> Depression cured my testosterone. Testosterone cured my depression or cured my anxiety, but I feel like it has not necessarily helped with simple... I feel like it hasn't necessarily helped with my generalized mental illnesses, but it has helped with my mental state and my mental health. Does that make any sense? Does this video make any sense? Half of it is just me talking about my cat. Being comfortable in myself and well, not completely, but being more comfortable in myself and being more confident in who I am has really impacted me in such a positive way that I can't even explain it. And I feel like not even all of it is mental health related, although a lot of it is, and I really don't want to make any more generalizations, so I'm just going to end this video. But thank you for listening. If you're trans especially, and you do have any and you do have any similar experiences, I... I'm, God, I hate asking for comments, but seriously, I would love to start a discussion about stuff like this. If you have similar experiences, or if you have a completely different experience, especially if you're trans, please let me know. I'd love to talk about it. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching. Goodbye. I hope you have a day where your gender identity positively impacts your mental health, and I will talk to you later, maybe.